The truckers, they just keep battling, but they now might have pulled the plug. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. And I don't d blame them for, for pulling the plug, but uh, a strategy that I thought might save all of Rhode Island may no longer be in play, and my guest tonight will explain that along with a whole bunch of other ramifications to the Roadworks program, the truck tolls as they are known. Welcome in on this Friday evening. On Fridays, we tend to spread it out a little bit. We don't necessarily go to the daily news of the day because, and it's just a secret between Friday viewers and me, we record this program on Thursday afternoon. So if all heck breaks loose on Friday, we make a comeback on Monday. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you much about what is proposed here at Rhode Island, read the tolls and the entire Roadworks program. Although sometimes we Rhode Islanders sometimes kind of fall asleep at the switch when things aren't happening right in front of our noses. And I will tell you, there's a, uh, I, I know what is going to happen when the tolls finally go up in Rhode Island. Like 60%, not of this audience, but 60% of Rhode Islanders are going to say, what's that all about? <laughs> because, you know, you just don't, not you, maybe your uncle, just doesn't pay attention. Let me throw you a couple headlines and introduce you to my guests. Uh, Rhode Island Picks Company wrote uh, to operate the 95 truck tolls, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the DOT director uh, rebuffs Republicans who just put in a bill to remove the tolls. Uh, Chris Maxwell is the president and CEO of the Rhode Island Trucking Association. And Mike Collins is the founder of the Gatsby Business Network, but also a dues-paying member of the American Trucking Correct. Association. Yep. Yep. And you guys have worked together, and uh, I consider you friends of the show, yep. and uh, yep. all of that. Good to see you. Nice Good to be you back. Too, Thanks for the opportunity. Yep. All right, just just take it away. Take it away. No, no, listen, we have... Well, here we are, you, two you, years you, later. And we don't have a toll. We don't have a toll. We don't have a toll yet. But what we do have, we've gone from bridges falling down and fire in a theater to asset management. So it's evolved. It's all, Roadworks is evolving uh, to, again, a, a critical need to replace crumbling bridges that are unsafe and falling down to now maintenance and asset management. So what is it? All right, so let me, let me because we got a little bit of time here, let me, let me give you an orientation. Uh, Mike is, is one of the leading citizen advocates. I, I think, you know, if we gave awards to citizen advocates, you know, Mike would be in the running for best in the last few years because he's one of those guys who just organically grew into kind of a spokes guy. Called the talk radio shows on the same week that he went to testify against the Roadworks yep. bill and all of a sudden captured the imagination of many of us in the media. Um, and I like to say it's his good looks. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Hey, but my mother raised ugly kids, not stupid ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's the way you've gone about this. And the Gatsby Business Network um, has really been kind of a byproduct Absolutely. of you kind of waking up to the issues of the state, correct? Somebody needs to stand up and represent what was going on. So and the Gatsby is doing what, so to speak? The Gatsby right now takes on the, the you know, the, 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 the laws and what the, the reps and stuff are trying to put through and what local business guys don't agree with. In, in this situation right here, I'm a trucker first, Gatsby being second. Right. Um, a, a, as you know, uh, I kind of guess I, gave my, I made my bones the night of the Senate hearing when I testified the night of the Senate hearing. And, and they never a met A couple any, years back. A couple years back, and I guess they never met anyone like the likes of me that wasn't afraid to tell him how it was. Um, I walked into this gentleman two years ago. I looked at him. I'm not a member of the Rhode Island Trucking Association. I said, you need my help. He looked at me and said, well, I said, but it's all said and done. It's only going to be me and you standing. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of prophetic in the sense that, it Chris, you, you have had, your organization has had um, lobbyist help mm -hmm. that you've more or less discharged. Correct. For the most part, you've... Uh, you had a little bit of experience in government, but not a lot. Not a ton of it. No, this has just kind of, you know, evolved. Right. But it's been a tremendous partnership. Mike's is a, is a tremendous, a numbers guy, a numbers savant trucking guy, and he rolls out the numbers like nobody else can, and everything he has said is pretty much coming true, and no one in government has yet to push back on the numbers he has talked about. 
and specifically truck counts. Mm. Um, so, so your involvement here, I mean, you more or less um, uh, have gotten into this thing and represent the Rhode Island Truckers Association on your own, so to speak, with mm -hmm. a good ally. And uh, well, you know, we I mean, represent. You understand. We, we represent uh, the Rhode Island Trucking Association. Represents 450 trucking companies, companies that use commercial vehicles and trucks to further their business. Right. So we're as much. A, a, a cross section of the Rhode Island business community as trucking companies. Mike is is, is unique in that he's one of the few for hire trucks uh, in the state that, that still exists here. But we are also one of 50 state partners of the American Trucking Association right. Federation. So we we work in concert with 49 other states, uh, and this is a federal issue now. This is this is a lot bigger than Rhode Island. So Rhode Island's discussion about tolls as they've been. Um, planned for the roadworks funding, at least in part, mm -hmm. uh, have caused the national organization oh, yeah. to, to kind of oh, laser absolutely. focus on Rhode Island. Correct. And you're, you're now, I don't know. Uh, We're crossing the bridge in, in from our, uh, really our, uh, it's always been a, a, a national battle. And the ATA obviously is, is really becoming more engaged because as I said before, there are other more glaring immediate issues that we're addressing now tolling is really coming front and center so while we've been kind of the guys in the in the foxhole carrying on the local battle we lobbied like crazy against it the, fir the first time out it didn't it didn't go anywhere it, it, it was preordained a year ago uh, we then obviously uh, called for the uh, the electorate to, to speak uh, in the November election that moved the needle certainly not the way we wanted it to but it did move it a little bit now we put in a vote, uh, a bill through Patricia Morgan to repeal. Uh, that hasn't done. So we, we're, we're going to still obviously shine the white hot spite, spotlight on, on RIDOT and everything that happens roadworks. But this is now going into the next phase, which is going to be the, the federal uh, lawsuit from ATA and the entire trucking industry right. and well, federation. So, so that's a great background. So between the two of you, it's been a really interesting ride because you had made some strategic uh, decisions and your articulation of those decisions really has guided a kind of a pillow fight between uh, yeah. state government and, and the trucking oh, industry. Absolutely. Uh, kind of a rope-a-dope-ish type of wait-and-see-ish type of thing that's yeah. going on back and forth. And uh, I want to talk about that in, in our next segment. Sure. Right now, the... Uh, State Republicans, Patricia Morgan, the minority leader, put in a piece of legislation, which was another statement more than a, an effective effort, because they don't have the numbers, Correct. Correct. to say, you know what, all right, get those tolls out of the roadworks equation. Explain again, we didn't bring the charts this time, but explain again, the roadworks program is multifaceted. It's federal funding, it's state Correct. money. The tolls... And Mike, one you're the numbers number. guy. One, the, one facet of the tolls works. are one facet of it. Ten percent. They're late in coming, and you've always always alleged that they're almost a zero sum game. They are. So, if, if to for reiterate, truckers, right? To reiterate back <laughs> two years ago, Roadworks originally started off as 120 million dollars, and then it evolved with the 610 connector into a 480 million dollar project because remember 360 million dollars for the Route 10 610 connector that brought us to 480. Then we had this absurd borrowing factor that by the time we paid the money back was going to bring us up to $1.2 billion. Roadworks as it stands today is a $4.6 billion project. Okay, and, and backing it out, they're looking at 460, they want $46 million a year out of the truck tolls. All right, which is basically physically impossible to derive. Uh, it was funny because I was going over Mr. Alpini's statement not Mr. The Alpini, director. The director statement that was released by another gentleman at the DOT who clearly states that they did a level three traffic study that's going to warrant and back up their $46 million. What does truck. level three mean? No well, that's, that no one, I don't know either, and we're going to try to request what that is. Um, but the technical jargon of the level three traffic uh, thing here, whatever it could be, it could be a guy with a crayon and a pad. I don't know what, you know, in this state. But point case being is they're saying they're going to come up with the $46 million. Pat Morgan's approach was to work off that $46 million and say, well, that's all fine and well, but number one, you don't have the truck count to bring you to the $46 million because, so a couple of simple facts. So every truck that runs through the state of Rhode Island, and we went through this before, Dan, but just so the viewers understand, we have a fiduciary obligation for every state we run through. 
So we have to pay it in mileage tax. So we either buy fuel and we pay it in mileage tax, or we belong to this conglomerate called IFTA, International Fuel Tax Agreement. So Rhode Island right now enjoys $2.40 for every tractor trailer that comes through the state. All right, because if, and, and, and in simple mathematics, 45 miles long, if we get six miles uh, or seven miles a gallon, whatever it may be, uh, we gotta buy six and a half gallons of fuel. So we either buy six and a half gallons of fuel or we pay the tax on six and a half gallons of fuel at 30 cents or a dollar 80, and it works out to $2.47. With that being said, those numbers are readily available to the Rhode Island Division of Taxation. And the Rhode Island Division of Taxation clearly states that there's only 80 million miles of all total IFTA miles coming through the state. Now what that means is that means every truck that has an IFTA sticker. That doesn't mean just tractor trailers. So when you divide that out, the maximum number of trucks that flow through the state of Rhode Island is somewhere around 6,000 units. But that's all vehicles. When we, we, you satisfy that by saying, okay, 50%, 55% can give us most, max 3,300, then there's ATRI, the American Traffic Research Institute. And what ATRI is, is that's that organization that decides whether you need an extra lane on the highway because you're, you're traffic congested in the morning. So they count. They count vehicles, they count trucks, they count whatever. ATRI comes up and says, you only have 3,000 trucks, tractor trailers a day, coming through Rhode Island. So for using a reverse calculation and, and, and mileage in the formula we we weren't off by much. So bottom line on the numbers is? The bottom line on the numbers is they can't achieve $46 million. If they achieve... Your even projection they, is the net revenue from the tolls annually will be what? $46 million. No, net, no, net revenue. No, we, we, net, we, oh, we, oh, we, figure, Mike, we figure about, we figure about figure 15, 18, yeah, yeah, 15 yeah. to $18 million yeah. less now, the now, 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 Pat Morgan has even boiled that right. further down because there are a lot of other costs that now are coming light, right. to light. Uh, the registration rebates uh, that are going out. Uh, the the garbage Registration interest, rebates are, are going out as a concession to truckers who complain correct. about the program right. in the first place. That's correct. Local truckers. Right. But what they didn't calculate... Uh, was for the the rest of the nation's trucks traveling under IRP, which is a portion. They get the same rebate. They, they get the same rebate. That was up. that was unfortunately right. are you, are something. You, are, that you, are you getting any we're, of this? Getting in the weeds with you. Well, the weeds are the, the, the weeds the, are what the government is not getting in, well, and that's that, the problem. That, I agree. And so there are two key issues here. There are some bridges that are being fixed, or at least one uh, of notoriety that may not even need it, yep. based on some of the formulas that mm -hmm. are applied to the program. And then the other bomb yep. here is that. They're pulling back, yes. and I'll explain why when we come back. Please. Just a con job on our citizens. But uh, the minority leader uh, has called the whole Roadworks program. That's Patricia Morgan, who's also no stranger. Uh, Chris Collins and uh, Mike Got Collins and Chris Maxwell. Right. At, uh, <laughs> it works. You know what? <laughs> I'll take it. It's not like I don't know these guys. Uh, we've always worried that the tolls once up would eventually come to every moving vehicle yep. in the state. Correct. Yes, sir. People like Gina Raimondo, once again, here's some radio audio. You can find it anywhere you want on any platform. Always say, don't worry about it. not going to happen. Don't worry about it. I won't support it. Uh, it's, it's just, it's not going to happen. But to make people secure about it, we specifically wrote into the law this cannot apply to cars and no future legislature can have it apply to cars unless the people vote on it. It has to go to a vote of the people. So I think once people see year after year after year that it's not going to cars, they'll feel better. <laughs> That's well, kind of funny. It, it, huh? That's kind of funny because it's contradictory because the other night Reg uh, Representative Filippi tried to reintroduce the law that says you can't toll cars. What they have here in the law now is a legislative action. Right. So the there governor, is no law that says you can't toll cars. The, the right. governor tried to lull the public into a sense of, of security by saying that, don't worry, there's no risk involved here because once we put those, we bait the bad guys with those first one or two gantries, lawsuit will find out what the, what the ultimate end game is here. That clearly is not, we're not going to be baited into that. Clearly, our, our conversations with the ATA, uh, and this goes back to last year when I was with Rich Pianca, their lead counsel in Washington, uh, and they started floating out the test gantry notion. Uh, he said, whoa, this, this is probably not going to be 
the way it plays out. We're not going to take the bait. They're not going to control us. There's probably more, there's yeah, probably more value to us waiting than us hitting okay, it first. Okay, you, you rolled right into that, but I yeah. don't want to roll into that too quickly. Understand, okay. these guys, for the last two years, have been talking about litigation, and the not-so-confident government leadership has right. been going, you know, our lawyers vetted this thing. You know, It's not like they've you know, hung a moon to you and said, you know what? Yeah. So it's, right, right. they've been, yeah, okay, well, it's, you know, they got an yeah. argument on discrimination, meaning you can't toll just trucks and blah, blah, blah. So we probably got half a dozen arguments. So as you guys office. are threatening a lawsuit, yeah. they're saying, hey, we'll put one or two yeah. up. We'll yeah. wait for the judicial process and the constitutional evaluation by the courts as to whether they can do that. And then you guys, your orientation becomes more national, understandable. Mm -hmm. You have a reverse thought about this and say we're not going to take the no. bait, meaning we're not going to sue to prove the gantry is constitutional or not, which now puts the state in a very interesting position. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because they have now to move forward. they got to move all their chips in yes. and, and, and do the entire infrastructure of 14 to 17 gantries. Right. And you guys will sue on your own darn time. Yep. At a time and date of our choosing, yes. on our terms. It's like full tilt poker at 3 o'clock in the morning. This right. Dan, I'm all in. Well, <laughs> it's funny, and I commiserate with you guys because I've always kind of, you know, seen your point of view pretty clearly. But I'm disappointed. And we've talked about this already on the radio. I'm terribly disappointed mm -hmm. because your constitutional test, I think, was the best protection for passenger vehicles Correct. being told on Mineral Spring Avenue right. driving down 146. Right. Correct. Now, we're in a rock and a hard place. Right. They go all in on the tolls. You guys wait and win when they're all up. Do we think all the tolls are going to come down? No. 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 So you're correct. So you may now that, spill your guilty conscience. Well, no, I think that I think that <laughs> no what we, uh, uh, the, the, the trucking association is in this to win okay and we do win we will win the problem is we're not while i'm a rhode islander we're, we're natives of rhode island we love the state the end game here is not to come in on our white horse and save the state of rhode island it's to it's to save the, the discriminatory the industry from a discriminatory unfounded tax all of these blame games the trucks do the worst damage pay no they don't pay their fair share it's gotten to the point where two years later they're still still prodding us with those things and i think that you know, ATA President Chris Spear is as, about, as, as, as calm and cerebral a guy as you will ever meet, but when he says things like extortion and we're going to leave Rhode Island bloodied and burned, he doesn't throw words around that like that often. And I think what, this what, is part what, of bloodied what, and burned here. We're not, we're not in this to save Rhode Island. We're in this to prove Rhode Island was, was screwed with the wrong industry. Other than the litigation, what would be a manifestation of bloodied and burned? What would it be? What we're Bypassing doing right the now. state, lowering the revenues even further. The revenues will drive itself down, Dan. I mean, the revenues are going to get diversion. Uh, don't forget the trust can come right Meaning, up. diversion uh, means? Diversion going around Rhode Island. So Rhode Island, 87% of Rhode Island communities are truck-based, truck-dependent. Now what will happen is you can go up 395. So well, back to my IFTA theory and stuff like that, one other point that it proves that most of the trucks drive through this state. They don't stop here. So they're on their way to Boston. They're on their way to Maine. They're using Rhode Island as a conduit. But, you know, Rhode Island's a poor choice for tolls because you have 395 right the side of it that allows the trucks to go around. So if she's trying to get $20 out of, a, out of a truck going through the state of Rhode Island where you can spend 12 go up 395 and pay it the $12 a mass. That's the way the trucks are going to go. So you're going to lose a considerable amount of truck traffic right up because of diversion. And that's going to drive our, our consumer prices right prices up. up. Because your index just went right now, through we the were already, We were already told. And, and, and because of uh, my relationship with the ATA, and, and let me clarify something right now. Well, I'd love okay. to have you. We'll clarify when we come back because I want to have them have a clear thought. And then I want to get a prediction from these guys as to what you really think will happen. Because maybe we'll get a break. Stay with us. They're wrong. The red marks on this are all the errors. Probably be a failing grade. Well, she counted things in um, into the cost of levying the tolls that have no involvement with tolls. All right, so the director of the DOT, who um, we will invite again here to the broadcast mm -hmm. to discuss all of this, uh, disputes some of the numbers that the Republicans have 
suggested don't work with the tolls. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Mike Collins have a one-on-one -on -one with the DOT director on numbers in, in, the, in a public platform. And or, and or Pat Morgan. Yeah. Um, there you go. Uh, even, but if, even, if, even if Pat Morgan or Mike Collins are half right, we're still in real trouble. You wanted to make a clarification, and then I want to talk about what, what could happen here. So the clarification, we had the hearing last Thursday when Pat called the hearing, and I kind of dropped the bomb that we're going to wait till all the toll gantries are up. Right. The, uh, I sprung that on Chris 10 minutes prior to. Okay. So there was no three days of thought process behind this, and I, I kind of try to clarify this on the radio. Well, I was ATA's a, been holding that ATA's close to been holding it out, and, he, and, he and, and what had happened was, because of what happened with Elvini coming out and giving the red mocks and like the poor penmanship grades and, and just the natural sarcasm of even over the bridge inspection that we were all wrong, I, I got the phone call that listen, it, get, the gloves are off now, just drop it out that we're gonna we're gonna hold it out. And okay, well the bridge inspection thing we don't have much time for, but you're suggesting that remember every all the gantries have to be assigned to a specific bridge. That correct, correct, fixed. correct. And so you're suggesting that uh, there's at least one uh, Oxford Street uh, correct. that uh, is in good shape, but they're gonna say it's not, so they can put a toll on Oxford Absolutely. Street. <laughs> Nationally, Oxford Street is recognized as a, as a very good state asset. And to drive revenue in, 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 in terms of placement at a cash-rich, toll-rich, uh, traffic-rich location, they've chosen Oxford Street. Uh, the, the director's rebuttal was that Oxford Street, uh, we're now into, again, asset management. And if the superstructure replacement, if, if they don't act on this now, the superstructure rating of five is going to pass to four. Whatever, it's all if it passes to four, yeah. below four, it's a safety issue. Here's the thing. Hundreds of our bridges are under a four. You guys will wait to put the, the, the legal uh, hammer down. It's going to be a game of chicken now. Absolutely. With That's, the gantry yeah. schedule um, pushed back a little bit here, it may very well end up being an election year battle. We may not get them. Correct. Because the net revenue produced against the entire need for Correct. infrastructure improvement right. is right. negligible. It, it is. It's insignificant in the grand scheme. Prediction, of real quick. Prediction. There's, there's, the, hopefully, there's going to be a hero in the in the bunch down on Capitol Hill or a group of them that are going to finally look at each other and said, "These guys have, have pled their case, and and we need to get together and push back on this." And maybe the speaker, who I think in in the bottom line, this thing is is around his neck. He'd love to see this thing go away. I agree with that. I think the speaker would like to see it go away, and I think some of the reps right now, they were fed a bill of goods. I think maybe now it's time to take another look at it. Because remember, if these guys went in court and the gantries are up, you think they're going to take all those millions of dollars of gantries down? No. no they're going to spread out the pain, which means get out your quarters electronically, of course. Yep, guys, good to see you. Good update. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate uh, final it. word when we come back. Stay with us. Now, I hope you paid attention to all the nuances of the conversation with the truck tolls. And one of the things I think we have to stop doing is calling them truck tolls. Oh, I know that's what the legislation originally calls for. But if you follow that whole play-by-play, -play, you have to know that our state government has got to make a decision here, whether to play chicken in the courts, put all the tolls up, and roll the dice, or pull back and find another finance mechanism. Uh, guess what? We, the people have input there, and I would suggest that you contact your legislator the old-fashioned way and let them know what you think. Have a great weekend. See you Monday.